So you want to learn how to solve one of these mother ah! Well, what about one of these sons of ah! Or perhaps I can interest you in learning what <laughs> Or perhaps I can interest you in learning how to solve one of these frustrating sacks of sh ah! Do you mind? What are we doing here? Okay, so I love Rubik's Cubes. My original vision for this video was to teach you exactly how to solve a standard 3x3, including every algorithm you need, how to read and understand its notation, and every common pitfall that you might encounter. But this is how that went. So this is the algorithm for solving the second layer, is u r u prime prime y prime 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 and u is just like this one divides, this one is left prime, means that rotate you rotate you rotate you rotate you rotate you rotate you rotate Find the cube and algorithm specifying what we need. Um, so yeah, this is the algorithm for solving that piece on the right. But the left would be this completely flip flopped. Cool. Instead, my goal is to show you how they're solved without getting into the nitty grittiness of it all, and hopefully prove to you that they're not as impossible as they may seem. They're mathematical puzzles, and any one of their 43 quintillion possible permutations can all be solved with intuition and about four algorithms. By the way, the term algorithm is just a fun word to use when you identify the next step in the solve, and then run through a series of memorized moves to achieve the desired outcome. Whether or not you know how it works is irrelevant if you're just trying to solve the cube. The inventor, Erno Rubik, took a whole month to solve his own puzzling creation. Did you... Did you see what I did there? And since its inception in 1974, it's become the best selling toy of all time, selling over 450 million units. And just check out what people have done in that time since. Yes! <laughs> One eternity later. Thank you very much for your patience. Now let's jump right into the solve. Before we solve it though, you should know how the puzzle actually works. It's not 56 individual tiles or stickers. It's made up of 20 pieces, tw eight corner pieces, 12 edges, and the centers are fixed into the puzzle. So you can never change the way that the center pieces are oriented to one another. They're fixed into the puzzle. So the yellow center is always gonna be opposite from white and red will always be opposite from orange, etc., etc. So a corner piece has three colors tied to it. This one's white, blue, and red. An edge piece will always have two colors, so this one's red and blue, and then a center, look, right? It's only one. This one's blue, this one's orange, whatever. Here we go. Let's start by mixing this puppy up. Okay, that looks pretty good. The first thing that you should know is that you're trying to solve it layer by layer, and you also work from the inside out. So what I mean by that is we'll start with the first layer, but what we're gonna do um, is create a little daisy right here, and I'll show you why. So... Once we have the daisy, we're gonna match it up with the centers that it corresponds with. Again, yellow is always opposite of white. This one's red, red, so I'm gonna go there. This one's blue, blue, this was very easy. And then the orange one, you just rotate 180 degrees. So we know these edge pieces are in the correct position because this lines up with this centerpiece, this lines up with this centerpiece. So now, like I said, we're going to work in, out, and now we're gonna solve these corner pieces. So I'm looking for white pieces that are easy enough. This one is white, blue, and orange, and this one is in the, this one just needs to go right here because look, white, 
blue, orange, right? We just need to get this one up here. That's all. Let's take this one. Green and orange. Green and orange, right? It's actually very simple. I'm just gonna get this one in a better way for me to look at. This one's green and red, green and red, beautiful. That goes there. This one's blue and red. We know that this one needs to go right here. Okay, so now we just solved this first layer. Make sense? What you're gonna do now is you're gonna turn it upside down and we're just gonna solve these edge pieces right here. So there's only four that we need to solve, but this is actually a very difficult part of the solve and I'll show you why. This one, this one's orange and blue, orange and blue. So we know that this one needs to go here and this is one of those algorithms that you just need to know and that's what it is, is it just placed this piece right here. Okay, we'll take this one, this one's red and blue, this one's red and blue. So the exact algorithm that we just used, we're gonna use it in reverse for the left side. So now instead of this one going here, this one's going to go right here. And again, same algorithm. Let's take a look at another one. This one's orange and green, orange and green. That's another one. What? Oh, green and red. Green and red. That one goes there. So what that just did was it just solved both of these layers here, and now we just have this one to work on. And in this case, we have a horizontal line. You can get a bunch of different kinds. This will be the L. You can just get the dot. You can get uh, a cross. So in this case, we're just gonna do that. That's another algorithm that you need to know. Uh, this time, we're looking for the center pieces because again, we're working from the inside out, uh, layer by layer. So right now, we see that this one is lined up here. This one is lined up here. You can get that or you can get them uh, across from each other or they can all be um, lined up already. So in this case, we're gonna have one face the back, one face the right, and this is the algorithm that you need for this one. And what that did was it just solved all of these edge pieces with the respective centers. So now what we're trying to do is trying to get these corner pieces in the right spot. So this one's not in the right spot. We know that because this one's red and blue. This one's red and green, so that one's not in the right spot. This one's also not in the right spot. This one, also not in the right spot. Okay, so in this case, when nothing lines up, you just do this algorithm, and what it does is it leaves this one the same and jumbles up these three. And in that case, what we got in this case was this one right here. This one's red, green, and yellow. So we know that this corner is right where it needs to be. But this one's not in the right, this one's not in the right, and this one's also not in the right. So like I said, we do the same algorithm, what that did was that left this one the same and it made these ones jumble up and in this case that these two are solved perfectly and now these two are in the right spot except the yellow needs to be flipped like this and for the algorithm to just flip a single cube goes like that okay we did the algorithm twice it's that simple and then we're going to rotate it move it over and now we got to do the same thing and boom that just solved it and that's basically how it works okay the entire solve the entire, mm, there's 43 quintillion ways that this can be jumbled up and every single one can be solved in such a routine, easy way that I just demonstrated. I'll link a video if you actually want to know the algorithms that I would recommend using to solve the beginner method. By the way, it should take you about an hour um, if you have the algorithm list out in front of you and you're just looking at it and saying, oh, okay, right, up prime, oh, this one's face, okay. If you do that kind of thing, um, then you'll be good to go. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this gets you a little bit interested in Rubik's Cubes because I think they're just so fun. So thank you very much. God bless. Till next time. One last little tidbit. If you want to give it a fun little, um, I don't know, artistic look, you take the centers and you rotate them twice on every axis. Cool, right? Thanks for watching.